Hello and welcome to Crossdale's Tips and Tutorials in Business Central. Today we're going to set up a Business Central environment in Windows. A couple of prerequisites to this. You need to have Docker Desktop installed. Docker Desktop needs to be set to run Windows containers. And you need to be using the Hyper-V backend, not WSL2. Business Central has to be running on a host that is the same version. So if you're on Windows 10, um, specific versions, 19.042, then your Business Central container will also need to be the same. It will pull that down automatically, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. One other thing as well is you'll need PowerShell with the BC container helper library installed or package installed. Um, I'll put a link to that um, in the bottom of the video. Um, and PowerShell needs to be running as administrator. So you go into this container, into this uh, PowerShell screen. You type new BC container helper. Uh, container wizard, sorry. That will open another box. Like this. And then you just need to go through the steps. So agreeing to the EULA. We want to select a local Docker container. We want to select B, predefined password, which is a standard password, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the name of the container, let's just call it um, Crossdale BC or whatever you want to call it. We want it to be the latest Business Central sandbox. You can pick old, older versions, but obviously we want the latest and greatest. And then it will ask you for the country. The default is United States. I'm actually in the UK. So I'm going to type GB for Great Britain. I don't usually install the test toolkit. Obviously, you're welcome to if you know what you're doing with that. Um, you can also assign a premium plan. You need a license for that, which I don't have. So hit no. When running the sandbox, you also um, you can select test users to add with special entitlements. I'm not going to bother with any of this. Just going to press enter default. Uh, I'm not going to do doing any um, base app development. So hit no. Um, you can also install an AO language uh, extension, um, but I already have this, so I'm just hit no. Uh, I don't have a license file, which is fine. And then we're going to want to select use Cronus demo data, de uh, demo database on SQL. So A, you can, if you have an existing database, you can select the other two, but I don't. Do you want a multi-tenant container? The default is yes, so just hit yes. Use default DNS settings unless you've got something different. Do not use SSL. Uh, th at this point, you might get some different options. Um, on this host, it will be Hyper-V isolation is the mode that it will use. It might use a different type called process isolation. Um, sometimes you have to play about with that to get this to work. This is pretty picky. Um, in sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So um, I'm just going to select this. The amount of memory now we need to select. Default is 4 gig. Honestly, I usually give it 8. Depends what you have available. If you're planning to run the same script, we can we can save that script. So I'll call it Crosdale BC script. And then um, I can also enter a file name as well. So uh, Crosdale BC script. And what will happen is that it will generate this script in PowerShell. I actually realized I called the image name Crosdale BC script. Let's just call this Crosdale BC image. And then you can just hit the play button, run script. And it will start to download everything it needs to build the container. Couple of things you might get um, issues with this is uh, your antivirus will block you from um, pulling down those files. Um, I found I've had issues with Windows Defender where you have to allow the artifacts folder that gets created 
uh, through through the uh, antivirus checks or stop the antivirus checks on them. Um, otherwise, uh, you'll be fine. I'll come back once this uh, finishes downloading. Okay, the uh, container has been created. The script is finished running. Let's just quickly go through a few things here. As it runs through, you see a lot of stuff happen. It pulls down um, containers. It downloads bits and pieces if you don't have them. Um, it will let you know if you need to update. Mine's quite old, actually. I don't quite know how to update that, but maybe I'll figure that out and put it in another video. Um, here's a few important parts. It will give you a web client URL. You need this to be able to load the page. So if I open up a web page now, you'll see that Crossdale BC forward slash BC, which is what's given to me here, means I can log in. I'll get a login page. I can do the password that I set, which was admin, and then uh, password with a capital P, at symbol, SS, W, zero, RD, password, just with some special characters. And then as you can see, it will log in. First time will probably take a, just a short amount of time. Oh, here we go. I was going to say, while this, while this was loading, um, I just want to go over a few things I had to add to the script. I'll put the script in the bottom of the video. Uh, I had to add this isolation process that could be different. Let's see if we're going to be process or Hyper-V. I added the DNS settings in and I set this multi-tenant to dollar sign false. I don't actually know if this is doing anything, but either way, it seemed to help. Um, I also had to disable uh, my real-time protection on Windows to get the uh, container to download. For some reason, it was erroring. So it's quite picky, um, but when you do eventually get it working, then yeah, then you're good to go. Um, you can follow my other videos to learn how to uh, um, deploy extensions and stuff like that. But as you can see, we can go to somewhere like Sales Orders and you get some demo data. And yeah, you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe. Thank you.